So once again, welcome to all those who have gathered here with us. Um, it's good to be able to see the faces of those who are here, some who, of whom we haven't seen for a while. We welcome the fishers back in our midst. Um, and for those who, are, who will be watching this online a little later, we pray that even though we can't see you and at this time, that you would still feel a part of the family of God. Because the family of God is not separated by time or distance or space but is, is the, is the, are the people of God wherever we may be gathered. We today celebrate two birthdays here with us in this room. Uh, well, Brenda's, Brenda's just outside the room, actually, but it's Brenda's 70th birthday today, and it's Helen's birthday as well. So to those celebrating birthdays, it's good to be able to celebrate with you. It was Stuart's birthday, Stuart's over there, and, and Gibson's birthday yesterday. Um, so it seems like it's, it's birthday week or something, or weekend. Um, are there any other birthdays? Because the way we're going, there must be another birthday here somewhere. No, but to all those who are celebrating birthdays, uh, may you experience the fullness of God's love today. We're going to light the candle as a reminder of the presence of Christ always with us. As we light this candle, we're reminded that the darkness is always extinguished by the light. And nothing can separate us from God's love and God's presence. And then we light this candle, the second candle, to remember all those who are suffering at this time in particular, those who have suffered loss of loved ones, those who are suffering loss of income, and those who are struggling with their health. We know of a number of our members who are struggling, and when we heard the statistics at conference last week of the number of Methodist people that we have lost over the last year, it was shocking, and, uh, and not only um, our members, but I think there were something like 42 ministers that we've lost over the last year. Um, and so we light the candle to remind us of God's presence as we hold all those who struggle um, in God's presence. Our world offers many wide avenues and beautiful boulevards to walk. Our God invites us to walk the road of service and sacrifice. Our society suggests we put down our roots in the shallow soil of pleasure and greed. Our God seeks to plant us on the banks of hope, watered by the rivers of joy and grace. Our culture promotes achievement, success, climbing to the top, ringing the bell. Our God tells us, if we want to be first, we need to go to the end of the line. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, you are in the kitchen all night, slicing, preparing, cooking, baking, food for all your children, so that we can all feast at your table. You do not clench your fist tight around your grace, but you let it pour from your open hands on those who need it most. We are blessed by such a God as you. You sit in the small hours telling us your stories until our weary souls fall asleep. You wrap us in the swaddling clothes of faithfulness, sending us to serve the broken of our world. We are called by such a servant as you. Tenacity and grace are the work clothes you put on each morning so you might mentor, mentor your children. Wisdom is sprinkled throughout your words. Sympathy trips off your tongue. We are taught by such a spirit as you. We confess how, how much we are like those first disciples of Jesus wisdom from on high. Our cravings for more and more toss us about like leaves in the fall winds. We boast of our great wisdom, 
yet do not understand your ways of peace and gentleness. We do not plant ourselves in your hope and grace, and so we reap the harvests of, of disorder and conflict. Draw near to us, gracious God, and forgive us. Draw us into your tender arms and teach us peace, gentleness, the willingness to put the other first, the wisdom to serve instead of seize, so we might bring forth a harvest of righteousness, justice, and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In you, God and community, holy and one, we have found all we need and long for, and we offer the prayer that we have been taught as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the wisdom from above. God plants in us the forgiveness and healing we need, so that we might share the good harvest of joy and mercy with everyone we meet. Bathed in the living waters, fed by the bread of life, we are given new life and hope. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. We're going to listen to a hymn, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. We turn to our scripture reading for this morning, and our reading for this morning is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9 and verses 30 to 37. Mark chapter 9, 30 to 37. Jesus and his disciples left that place and went on through Galilee. 
Jesus did not want anyone to know where he was because he was teaching his disciples. The Son of Man will be handed over to people who will kill him. Three days later, however, he will rise to life. But they did not understand what this teaching meant, and they were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and after going indoors, Jesus asked his disciples, What were you arguing about on the road? But they would not answer him, because on the road they had been arguing among themselves about who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve disciples, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must place themselves last of all and be the servant of all. Then he took a child and made him stand in front of them. He put his arms around him and said to them, Whoever welcomes in my name one of these children welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also the one who sent me. Thanks be to God for this word to us. A child is an image of absolute powerlessness and vulnerability, particularly at that time. That time, children had absolutely no rights whatsoever. They were seen as the, the kind of lowest of the low, had no power at all. And, were, and, and children, as we know by nature, are completely vulnerable, dependent on others. And Jesus says, when we welcome one who bears the image of absolute powerlessness and vulnerability, when we welcome a child, we welcome God. God's reign is about including all in the circle of God's love. There's no room in God's reign for us and them. There is only us. And the way of the cross, the way of Christ, is to disrupt centers of power. The inner circle should constantly be disrupted as we draw those on the outside in, as we empower the disempowered. Because that's what Jesus does. He draws this, this vulnerable, powerless individual and puts them front and center and puts the focus on them. The inner circle, those with the power, should constantly uh, be drawing in those from the outside. And their power needs to then be disrupted as we empower the disempowered. Ched Myers puts it this way. He says, The messianic revolution is not about seizing power in order to impose a new social order from the top down. It seeks to transform relationships in building the new order from the bottom up. That's the way of God, the way of the cross the way of Christ. We saw last week how Jesus challenges our thinking and invites us on an alternate path that's not about power and glory, but about sacrificial, self-giving love that is the only way to bring about the healing and restoration of all things. And this week, Jesus continues that theme. This reading follows pretty closely on Jesus' teaching that we focused on last week. And we find Jesus again referring to this self-giving sacrificial love. Because his disciples still haven't got it. He's just explained to them that he needs to suffer, he needs to die, he will rise again. He's just explained to them that he's turning things upside down. 
and, and then he then repeats it, and we're told they still don't get it. We're told they don't understand, and they're too afraid to ask. And then we find them arguing about greatness, about who is the greatest. And Jesus responds with the words in verse 35, whoever wants to be first must place themselves last of all and be the servant of all. The way of the cross is the way of servanthood, the way that seeks the best for others, the way that seeks the best for all of creation. It's about serving others and serving creation, not the other way around. And yet the world that we live in tends to focus very much on being served rather than serving. We see all of creation as somehow serving us, but we are called to serve creation. We are called to be stewards of all that God has given us. And this means that we have to pay very close attention to social power and privilege. Again, Ched Meyer says, the child represents powerlessness, the least of the least in the social order of antiquity, without status or rights. The, the least of the least in the social order of antiquity, without status or rights. And therefore, when, when Jesus places that child front and center, Jesus is calling us to pay very careful attention to social power and privilege. In May 2019, South Africa made the cover of Time magazine. Sadly, though, it was for all the wrong reasons. The World Bank declared us the most unequal country in the world. And we made the headlines. And then that's a typical picture of, um, of the kind of inequality that we see. The beautiful leafy suburbs on one side of the road and right on the opposite side. And, and Melinda and I have often commented that wherever, whichever town we go into, you'll see that the town is, towns are always divided by a railway line. Hey, have you noticed that? And we talk about people on the other side of the tracks, right? Um, in, in, in Walmer, where we lived, it, it wasn't a railway line, but it was, it was a main road. And on the one side of Hjuch Road, you had all the leafy, leafy suburb and, and all the wealthy. And, and the further away you got from Hjuch Road, the, the bigger the houses got and, and the more wealthy the people that lived there. And on the other side of Hjuch Road was, was Klebecha Township. Um, and it was just an, an image just like that. The World Bank report that indicated that we are the world's most unequal country said or showed that the richest 10% of the population of South Africa own more than 85% of household wealth. The richest 10% of this country own more than 85% of household wealth, while over half the population have more liabilities than assets. Over half the population have more liabilities than assets. There were so many shocking statistics. And of course, we, we know it's, it's a reality in the world that we live in. Women are generally paid less than men for exactly the same, the same job, for the same qualifications, the same skills. Um, and, and very often we find that in this country still we are divided by the color of our skin. That's not the world that God envisions for us. The article in Time magazine, interestingly enough, used Imizama Yetu as, uh, as an example of the kind of inequality we're talking about. 
Imizama Yetu is in Hard Bay and is a prime example of this kind of, of inequality. And it's a part of our circuit. It's an area that I serve, and it serves as the example of inequality. When our mission director from, um, from, from MCO up in Joburg came to, to visit, uh, we took him on a drive through Hout Bay. And I, I said to him, you know, we spoke about how Hout Bay in particular is an example of this inequality. I mean, you have some of the, 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 the biggest, most fanciest houses, and then literally down the road, you have Imazama Yetu. Um, and and around the, on the other side, you have Hungberg, uh, the, the fishing village. And so you have absolute poverty and squalor alongside wealth and privilege and status. What does it mean to welcome a child into the center? Jesus takes a child, the most powerless and vulnerable, and places them front and center. Jesus evens the power dynamics. Today, I believe we need to ask, how is the church and that's us. How are we, the church, disrupting power? How are we addressing the inequalities in our society and our world? South Africa isn't alone. They just happen to be the worst. But this goes throughout the world. We can't leave this work up to the politicians. It's God's work. And I believe that Jesus, in this passage that we read, is illustrating that it's part of God's work and therefore part of our work. It's part of God's work of healing and restoration of all creation. The church is called to serve the least of these. And by doing so, we serve Christ. We serve God's work of healing and restoration. I want to draw to a close with words from James, the book of James, chapter 3, and verses 16 to 18. One of the other passages set for today. And we read, Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure, first of all. It's also peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. And goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every kind of evil. We need to guard against prejudice and hypocrisy. We need to work for the peace that God intends for us and all our world. And that includes justice, where we don't have the kind of inequality that the World Bank talks about. Again, I quote Ched Myers, who said, The vocation of peacemaking and reconciliation must begin with the household of faith. The vocation of peacemaking and reconciliation I use the words healing and restoration of justice and peace must begin with us. We cannot wait for the world to change. We need to be the change that we want to see in the world. Our conference theme this year that was introduced at conference last week is reimagining social holiness, sustaining hope and healing. 
reimagining social holiness. Social holiness is, is what John Wesley called us to. He said, it's not just about personal holiness. It's not just about getting our own lives sorted out. It's about sorting out the world in which we live. It's about ensuring that all people have equal access to the life that God intends for us. And that's how we sustain hope and healing. By reimagining social holiness, reimagining a world where all people have equal access to that which brings life. This is the driving theme for the year ahead in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And so may we work for a world where all people have the life that God intends as we work with God for healing and restoration. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray. And so confident in your love and mercy, we offer our prayers. Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down the barriers that divide, so that united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit together at one table, and serve you in one common ministry. Guide the rulers of the nations. Move them to set aside their fear, greed, and vain ambition, and inspire them to serve for peace and justice, so that all your children may dwell secure, free of war and injustice. Hear the cries of the world's hungry and suffering. Give us who consume most of the earth's resources the world to reorder our lives so that all may have their rightful share of the food, medical care and shelter and so have the necessities of a life of dignity. Restore among us a love of the earth that you created for our home. Help us to put an end to ravishing its land, air and waters and give us respect for all your creatures so that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name. Renew our nation in the ways of justice and peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. Erase prejudices that oppress, free us from crime and violence. Help us create spaces where our youth can find healthy belonging. Give all citizens a new vision of a life of harmony. Strengthen this congregation in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise, and that our lives may conform to the image of your Son, so that we might faithfully minister in your name and witness to your love and grace for all the world. Look with compassion on all who suffer. Support with your love those with incurable and stigmatized diseases, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, those who live without hope, those who are homeless or abandoned. As you have moved towards us in love, so lead us to be present with them in their suffering in the name of Jesus Christ. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole. Give hope to the dying. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold all who suffer in body or mind. Not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you, that they may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, in your loving purposes, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes 
in all things for which we pray. Give us the will to seek to bring them about for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we draw to a close, we listen to the song, May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day. And so as we prepare to go from this place or go out into the world during the week to continue the work of healing and restoration that God has begun through Christ, we, we commit ourselves to that, our whole lives and all that we are and have. And so as you leave, you're invited to make your offerings, uh, your gifts available to God. But it's not only about money, it's about using all that we have to serve the world and others around us. And so let's pray. Gracious God, we bring the gift of our lives to you, along with the gifts that we offer as we leave this place or that we make available to you through EFTs and in other ways. Take our lives and let them be consecrated to you and your work in the world. Take our gifts and use them as a means of hope to those who hunger. Help our lips to praise you. Help our hands to serve you. Help our hearts to love you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand and say the benediction to one another as we bless one another to go out and be a blessing to the world. The words are on the overhead, and you might want to just uh, reach, stretch your hands out, but, uh, yeah, and just bless one another. And so we say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so go in peace, and may God's peace go with you.